subject this morning to miss the mark. To miss the mark. 53rd chapter of Isaiah is a complete divine revelation of the plan of redemption. A divine revelation of our sin and God's remedy for sin. This chapter portrays the awfulness of sin and heaven's price to atone for sin. Sin in the Hebrew, shatah, the default, is from the root shatah meaning to fall short, to do wrong, to offend, to be culpable. In the New Testament, Greek is taken from the word amartia, meaning to miss the mark. See, 1 John 3, 4 is the transgression of the law. See, 1 John 5, 17, all unrighteousness is sin. See, Romans 14, 23. Tells us whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Sin. Romans 14, 23. Whatever is not of faith is sin. 1 John 5, 17. All unrighteousness is sin. In light of all this, then sin is any deviation from the known will of God either of neglect to do what he has specifically commanded or doing what he has specifically forbidden. Sin originated with Lucifer. According to Ezekiel 28, 11 to 17, we find that he had an inordinate pride in the beauty and wisdom that God had given him. And as recorded in Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, an overweening desire and jealousy for what God had not given him. Sin entered this earth when Satan persuaded Adam and Eve to take that which God had preserved for himself. Under the subterfuge, they would thereby obtain a superior state of wisdom. Thus, by one man, sin entered into the world. And as a result, all have sinned. The Bible teaches for all. All have sinned. Whatever your social standing, you've seen. Whatever your financial accounting, you've seen. Whatever your racial background, you've seen. Whoever you are, you've seen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's your trouble. That's my trouble. We are sinners. And as a result, man is unsuited to God. In his sinful state, man is disgusting to God. In fact, the Bible says sin is an abomination to the Lord. Man's head is sick. His eyes are evil. His lips are unclean. His tongue is unruly. His neck is stiff. His throat is an open sepulchre. His heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. His bones are full of sin. His hands are full of blood. His feet run swiftly to mischief. In this loathsome condition, God cannot stand the sight of the creature that he has made. But the thing that hurts God the worst is the fact that man likes sin. We enjoy sin. Sin has a good flavor. We engage in sin, spend our time in sin, Exhaust our body and immune and immerse our mind in sin. Fellowship with sin and have inner craving for sin. You come short of God's moral requirement. Fail to live up to the Sermon on the Mount. Failed, I say, to live up to the teachings of Christ. So we're in bad shape. Lost our natural affection. Bad shape, lost our love for one another. Sunk so low, we lost our own self-respect. Doesn't take much to see that. 
All you have to do is turn to BET and watch the video. Come on. Lost ourselves this day. If we're not parading our women around half naked, then we call them all kind of terrible words. Bragging about how we misused them and abused them. We think that what makes a man is the ability to have a child. And what makes a woman is the ability to bear one. That's foolishness. Any dog can conceive. And any female dog can have a little. What makes you a man is not what's between your legs. What makes you a man is what's between your ears. If you want to really be a man, then you need to get something in between your ears. Watch out. So that you can take care of what you produce. Right. So that you can train them to be a real man and a real woman. But I digress. We even reach the point where sometimes we lose our spiritual joy. Most introspection points out the fact that God's people just are not satisfied to be God's people. We've got to get as close to the world as we can. All the time forgetting that by beholding, we become changed. All the time forgetting that there is a disease in our humanity. And the correct name for it is sin. And dress it up if you wish. Call it by some polite name if it'll make you feel any better. And you can say that we only need to catch up with what is best in the human experience. And you can say that we are suffering from cultural lag. And you can say that our problem is ignorance and that once we know what is right, we will do what is right. But if the prophet Jeremiah were here today, he would say in no uncertain terms, stop deceiving yourself. Sin is just sin. Sin destroys the nervous system of conscience. Sin wrecks the power of right thinking. Sin, the sickness which brings us to rebellion against God and rebellion against our best selves. Sin leads to estrangement, to unfriendly distance with God. Sin leads us from truth to error, and we find ourselves missing the mark. In fact, to be truthful, each of us must confess that inside each of us, there's a new me and an old me. And every time I think I have the new me lined up, the old me shows up. Uh, there's a war going on inside. And my mind is at odds with my memories. And my carnality is at conflict with my spirituality. And my flesh and my faith just don't seem to get along. It's as if there was a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde on the inside. And it's gotten so bad that the good that I would do, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. To make matters worse, even when I would do good, evil is always present before me. We all have this haunting dual personality. Saved, but still beset by sin. Converted, but still caught up in the crossfire of iniquity. Born again, but still backslide. Baptized, but still on a downward path. Though we sing about pressing on the upward way, we all have this sin problem, I tell you. Saint today, sinner tomorrow. Holy on Sabbath, unholy on Sunday. Righteous this week, irreligious next week. Shouting this Sabbath, sitting like a bump on the log next Sabbath. Loving today and hateful tomorrow. Leaping yesterday, limping today. Paul, in view of this sad state of affairs, cries out, Oh, wretched man that I am, 
who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That is body. Okay. What Paul was talking about was the practice they had in those days. That if you murdered somebody, they would chain that murdered man to your back. And you'd have to carry that dead, deteriorating, festering body until it killed you. That's the picture that he had in his mind when he did that. Oh, wretched man that I am. I've got this old man of sin on my back. And he's killing me. Who can deliver me from this body of death? Jeremiah said something similar. Huh? Jeremiah said, Is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Well, I'll tell you that in the sickness of the soul, there's no earthly bomb. There's no human cure which will get to the seat of the problem. Sin has no more cure. Education makes the sickness of sin more subtle and deadly. Wealth makes the disease of sin more resourceful and adroit. Culture makes this sickness more polished and sophisticated. Prisons make the disease more virulent and vicious. Recreation makes the sickness more vigorous and subtle. Nothing on this earth can take away this disease. All of you who are hurting right now with sin want to be healed. But you keep looking for pretty attractive healers. I just thought I'd let you know the government cannot heal you. Government can't even heal itself. And they tried the New Deal. They tried the Fair Deal. They tried the New Frontier and the New Society. We've gone from law and order to voodoo economics. Then we, we thought that we could just do better. Now I don't know what we do. And neither does he. If you're looking for the government to help you, don't hold your breath. Schools cannot heal your soul. Churches cannot heal your soul. Priests cannot heal your soul. Preachers cannot heal your soul. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Yes, there is. We have a bomb that will cure the sin-sick soul. And my Bible tells me that in the fullness of time, when all things were ready, God sent his son one who heals all our diseases and takes away the awful sickness of sin. I just thought I'd bring to your attention, if you don't mind, that there is one who is altogether lovely. There is still a lily in the valley. There's still a bright and morning star, a sun of righteousness risen with healing in his wings. If you need physical healing, somebody call him Jehovah Rophekah. The Lord who healeth thee. If you need spiritual healing, his name is Jehovah Mekwadeshfi, the Lord who sanctifies you. If you're hungry today, he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide. If you're troubled today, let not your heart be troubled. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. If you're in need today, he's Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is there. He's El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. You ought to worship him. He's Jehovah Shekinah, the Lord our glory. You ought to praise him. Praise him for no other reason than he's worthy to be praised. He's whatever you need. He's everything you need. The angel gave you said, just call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So when by faith I call him, I no longer have to miss the mark. Instead, like Paul, I press toward the mark with all my weakness and all my wickedness i press toward the mark with all my faults and all my failure i press toward the mark with all my shortcomings and all my disappointments with all my triumphs and all my tribulations with all my rights and all my wrongs i press toward the mark not because i'm so righteous not because I'm so holy. Not because I've kept the commandments so well. Because all my righteousness is but filthy rags. I 
press toward the mark. Because I, I have to walk by faith and not by sight. So I press on because I know the Lord has saved my soul. I press on because I know the Lord has made me whole. I press on because I know the Lord has laid his hand on me. And the angels in heaven that have signed my name. And can't nobody do me like Jesus. But there's no other name under heaven given among me whereby we must be saved. Yes, there's a bomb in Gilead. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Yes, there's a bomb in Gilead. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. His name is Jesus Christ, the Lord. And though your sin be as hard, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. There is nothing too hard for God. No matter what you've done, no matter how long you've been doing, no matter who you've done it with or who you did it to, God still loves you. God still will forgive you. But you have to decide to let him do it. We want to thank you for spending this time with us. And we ask that if you were impressed to give your heart to Jesus, that you would at your earliest convenience send a note to the following address. Ephesus SDA Church, P.O. Box 201-119, San Antonio, Texas. You may return your tithe and offering to www.adventistgiving.org or you can mail it to the address that we just gave you, which is Ephesus SDA Church, P.O. Box 201-119, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. Again, may God richly bless you. We'll see you next week. Be looking on your email, your telephone line. There will be a prayer line beginning this Wednesday call in and we'll all pray together. God bless you until next week.